Uh, well, we continue with talking about women's soccer. We welcome in the redshirt senior from Milford, Connecticut, Corey Halaz. Corey, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Corey. Thank you. Uh, well, Corey named one of the tri-captains of this team this year. What does that mean to you? Well, it's a huge honor to have my teammates have look at me like a leader, look at me as someone they want to represent their team, and to be a captain with Shauna and Lena, we're, we're great together. We're all a little different, but we have great res respect for one another, and we just find a way to make it work. I'm glad you mentioned the fact that you guys are a little different because usually when there's co-captains or tri-captains named, one's the vocal leader, one's the, you know, the leader on the field. How would you describe yourself versus the other two? Um, I don't think I'm the most vocal. <laughs> <laughs> I no. think Shauna wins that category. <laughs> Um, but I definitely... Throwing her <laughs> under the bus right now, right? <laughs> in a good way. Okay, in okay. the best way. Um, she, she's definitely the most vocal. I definitely will speak up. Yeah. I'm not afraid to... <laughs> not afraid to mix it up. Right. Appropriate exactly. time. Yeah. But yeah. I think I'm more of a leader on the field. And in practice situations in the game, um, I like to bring the intensity and let people know what level we're playing at and just set the bar high from the beginning and hope people are on board because if they're not... That's when the vocal part comes out. <laughs> well, uh, you, you made me change from where, where we were going to go with this interview because you just said you like to set the tone. Friday night, Boston College, can you give us the BU All Access exclusive? What are you going to say to your teammates or what are you going to do to make them know wh what you're bringing to that game? I mean, the returners know. It's BC. <laughs> right. they know it's but you get a lot of new faces on the team. We do have a lot of new faces, but I think we've already started letting them know how mm -hmm. important this game is. I mean, every game is important for us. Every game, same mentality, same approach, but... I think the girls know that BC's, like Coach said, brings out the best in us. And we're going to have to play the best to beat them. And we've done it before. We did it yep. my freshman year, which was one of my fondest moments here at BU. And I think we definitely have it in us to do it again. Well, talk about the last game first, and that's Washington, another 3 nothing win after beating American as well, a team that receiving votes in the NCAA poll. And it was part of the Terrier tailgate, which is the second straight year that the women's team has gotten to host the Terrier tailgate. Uh, what, what did you think of the Terrier tailgate festivities? And Coach mentioned that the crowd may have been a factor at the end of the game. How much did that help having 2,000 fans screaming their heads off for you? Um, it's definitely awesome. I mean, we always have our parents, and there's always a good core of, our fans that do come out and support us, but to come out on the field and, you know, as the warm-up goes along, see more and more people file in, it just feels good to know that people are watching, people yep. are following us. And we do know there's people who aren't here who follow us on online and email coach. And it just n it's nice to know that we have a following and that people do care what our results are. How do you compare the team that played against Washington versus the team 11 days ago hosted, uh, hosted number two Stanford as well? Uh, do, what kind of differences did you see in the teams? Well, I think we've just had a, a lot of time, even though it's only been a week in between the games, just to figure out some more things. Pl a couple more days of playing together makes all the difference. Um, people had the mentality from the beginning. I mean, I think that's something we saw in our first game and our second game, South Carolina and Stanford. We yeah. have the heart. Yeah. We have the fight. Um, you know, it might take a little while to get it on the field, but we played well against both those teams. And we know what we're capable of, and we know that we can compete with anyone. So... I just think it's a process of coming along throughout the season. Was Stanford, do you think, the toughest team that you faced in your career here? Um, they're the highest seeded team. Right. Um, but I think any game can be your toughest <laughs> game. <laughs> Sometimes the toughest games are the ones where you're expected to win. To win, yep. Just because, you know, maybe that's where you lose your concentration for 10 minutes and that changes the game. But definitely any game could be the toughest. And they were, they were definitely good, but got to be ready for anything, I guess. As part of that game against Washington, uh, you saw Emma Clark, a freshman, get her first goal. How, first of all, how happy are you always to see a freshman get her first collegiate goal? And also, do you, do you remember your first collegiate goal as well? Um, for me, it's exciting anytime anyone <laughs> scores. I usually am sprinting up the field to. I think we have footage them. of that also, yeah. <laughs> um, but just remembering my first goal was versus UNH, I kind of shot it thinking. Who knows? Maybe this will go in. And then I scored, and I was just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it actually just, went it in. just went in. Yeah, it went in. <laughs> and just having your teammates run up to you and, like, you know, good job. Way to go. Way to put that in for us. You know, it just feels great. And I know she was excited. Her expression afterwards was priceless. So it always feels good, especially with those first-time goals. So what you're saying is sometimes the best goals are the ones you didn't even think you are going to yeah. score? Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that, I guess. Yeah. 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 You'll, you'll have to way. take whatever you can get. And certainly – uh, I asked this to Coach as well real quickly, talking about, you know, obviously a lot of new faces on this team with the eight freshmen and two transfers. 
the goalkeeping, obviously I know that, you know, as much as you guys are trying to put the ball in the net, you got to have someone back there helping you guys. What have you thought of uh, Kelly King and the way she's performed so far? Um, I think all of our keepers throughout practice have gained our confidence from the beginning. I mean, that was obviously a position where Janie Riley graduated. Right. I've had her behind me. All your all career. All along. Yeah. I mean, even freshman year she was a little injured, but we've had outstanding goalkeeping, but they were all very experienced, so I'm sure everyone was a little – how are they going to perform? And they've done nothing but greatness in their practice. They set the tone. They're always challenging us. And I just think we're confident no matter who's in that right now. So now it brings us to Friday night, Boston College, number seven, BC coming to town. Obviously, you just talked about it. you guys are you're ready to go. How excited are this team and these newcomers to get into this rivalry as well? Um, we're pretty excited. It starts today at practice. I'm <laughs> sure everyone will notice there's going to be the mentality where we're preparing for a big game. We're ready to win. People want it. So. Well, we hope to see that W afterwards. Corey, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. That's thanks Corey Halaz joining us here on BU All Access. The Terriers will take on number seven, Boston College, Friday night at 7 p.m.